Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, at the time of death, in the Naqshbandi way, what will we see at that time? Please forgive the bad adab. Will we see Mulana Sheikh Nazim and Sheikh Daghestani? And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qur'aji Sudai for miskeen Rizal and Mujahan but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. That alhamdulillah for those whom come to the tariqah and Allah inspire within their hearts to take a wakil, a representative one whom will represent the servant in accordance to Allah's will. Representation outside of Allah's will is not accepted. And ayatul, there are ayahs of Qur'an in which Allah said, they took their awliya as their lords and their protectors. This is like a law firm. And they swear the allegiance to the constitution and there can be no law lawyer whom follows a different constitution, they're no longer a valid lawyer in this court of law. So the, the understanding is that the law of Allah is supreme, Allah's will is final. Those whom represent Allah in accordance to his laws and to his wishes, then Allah has blessed them with guidance and a nearness in which we call the friendship of Allah He's attached His love upon them and brought them near to Sayyidina Muhammad So that's what those ayahs mean for those whom they took a protector against Divine laws. So there is no one who can represent anyone against Allah's laws, make their own laws and sort of ridiculous sort of things, I can do this for you, don't worry, give me money and I'll take away all your sins, come into this box and repent to me and all your sins will be gone. That's what the Ayatul Kareem is describing, that if Allah going to punish you, there's no one on earth that can tell you you're not going to be punished. So that's not, that's completely a… a As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Against the divine decree. So, whatever Allah and Prophet have established, then this is the ways of tariqah. Means everyone will take their amal into the grave. If they did good, they will take a, a, a being, there will be a companion and we describe this in the realities of manifestation, all from holy hadiths of Prophet The Prophet was teaching that everyone will take their deeds and actions into the grave. In other hadiths described everyone will have a companion in the grave. And they asked, what is the companion? And Prophet described, your deeds. Means the deeds of people will manifest. If they did bad, it manifests as very, very bad creatures. That at the time of death, those enter into the grave as, we are your companions here. And that becomes the punishment of the grave, the azab and torture of the grave 
by what the person brought into the grave with them of their bad actions and bad deeds and, and bad characteristics. Now on the other side Prophet described that for the goodness, the one whom they did good, they acted good, they prayed, they fast, they read Qur'an, they did their salawats, they did all these actions. Then there's immense amounts of hadith on how those actually will take a form. In the grave you'll come with many companions, there will be a companion of light that approaches them and begins to intercede for them. And they say, who are you? He says, I'm the Qur'an. Every time you read me I was manifesting, Allah makes an angel. These are not difficult for Allah in the world of light. An angel begins to manifest from the Qur'an that you're reading and that that angel comes as the Qur'an for you and begin to intercede for you in the grave sending actions and blessings and all these different things. And every time you fast, I'm your siyam, I'm your fasting, I'm your Ramadan, I'm your good deeds, I'm your salah means all of these immense companions of our good deeds. So of course if, if the Qur'an is manifesting, the salah is manifesting, all these good deeds actually have an energy that manifests. What about the souls of pious people? Well, Allah is making us to continuously give them salams in the middle of our salah. As salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. That Allah wa kunu ma sadiqeen itaqullah and keep the company of truthful servants. What about these blessed souls that no doubt we kept their companionship in life? Of course their companionship was already from the world of light. If in life you keep the companionship of that which is eternal, that which is blessed, no doubt when the person takes their last breath these are the companions that begin to appear. All the love for companion of Sayyidina Muhammad of course then the intercession and the light of Prophet begins to enter into that grave and greet the servant. The, the light of the holy companions, every time you celebrated a birthday, fed food and drink and water for the sake of these holy companions because they loved Sayyidina Muhammad and Sayyidina Muhammad loved them. This is an immense blessing. We were giving one cake and so happy with that. Now every, every holy event there are hundreds if not thousands being fed and food distributed and wow. tons of food being saved and put out in the names of these holy souls. Wow. You don't think the soul will come to greet you? What, what type of immense manners they must have that in this physical world you stop to love them, remember them, even gave a, a bread and a gift and a water on the street for them. You don't think in your time of need? they're going to be appearing. And your, your greatest time of need is the transition from the physical world in our state of death into the hereafter. So of course the, the people of love and muhabbat they have no doubt in their heart that we love them and we did all these honourable acts to, to praise Allah and show how much we venerate and respect them. Of course they'll show up at the grave and say that in your time of need I'm here to intercede for you. That in if you're already blessed I'm here then to dress you, bless you, give to you from my secret. This water you gave, alhamdulillah but look what Allah gave of bounty to me, I want to dress upon your soul. It doesn't take anything, these are very generous and loving souls. Imagine then the Ahlul Bayt that you, you fed for us, you, you, you gave water for us, you, you made zikrs in our names, you did all these associations. Of course in your time of need we'll be there to intercede for you, to bring you near to our love for Sayyidina Muhammad So of course every good deed is going to manifest and the, the blessings of the grave is when we really understand what Allah gave to us of tariqah. People have no understanding, we said last night, they, they're so complaining of all of what they want and they didn't get 
They have no idea what Allah gave them of an immense gift. So when you study birth and you study the, the process of, of, of uh, conception, you know the egg chooses the seed. 500 million seeds are sent into the womb which is the Kaaba. Is haramain, no haram in the womb, no exposing of the womb. 500 million seeds are sent. A command comes to the egg of who it wants and releases a chemical that pushes other seeds away and then calling the seed that it wants to come in and enter into the egg to fertilize the egg. By whose command? Izzatullah. With the might and majesty of Allah out of 500 million seeds you're born in this world. It means your, your gift, your life was an immense gift, immense gift. We already won every type of gift from Allah by being granted existence on this, on this world. And then on this world all whom we loved and the good deeds and good actions that we've done, no doubt they are present with us, inspiring us and blessing us in especially our times of need in calamities and distress. Their lights are all around giving a, a, a love and security to the heart that, don't worry inshaAllah everything will be okay, giving isharat and guidance that when we find ourselves down and, and not understanding what to do, all those deeds and those actions and those spiritual lights and beings are around us continuously move forward, inspiring towards goodness. Because the companionship of good deeds never leaves the servant. Like we said, love never leaves anyone alone. If what you did was from love, it never leaves you alone. Love by its nature is always a strong companion. But if you did what you did out of your head and, oh this makes sense, this doesn't make sense, well the brain always is alone. The brain itself is alone, a piece of meat in a closet that can't see anything. So that which is done by muhabbat and ishq and love then that companionship is very strong and very firm. So alhamdulillah these lights become present. So there are attorneys, these blessed souls they come and immediately begin to intercede for the soul. Anything that is going to be of any wrong they will begin to take the case to the angels and to the Divine the Presence and begin to intercede, Ya Rabbi that this servant did these good deeds, this servant did these supports, Ya Rabbi we're asking for intercession and and for anything to be lessened, if a difficulty is coming that Ya Rabbi to lessen those. So that's the concept of an attorney and a waqeel and that Allah gave them that authority and that blessing. So alhamdulillah these, these good deeds, good love and to love the right people, good people, righteous people, pious people, clean people, it has an immense companionship in this physical world in our time of need and, 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 and sadness and despair and darkness, they illuminate our entire surroundings and our existence. And in our time of need, in the greatest time of need within the grave that is immense companionship. That's why the tariqah is about companionship, love and respect. We said that if everyone's taking from this tree and they nourish themselves from the teaching of the shaykh, why you don't take care of the shaykh? Why don't you think of the shaykh? Why aren't you praying for the shaykh? In every prayer you should be mentioning the name of the shaykh and praying for him, for his health and, and for his, his being protected. Who's going to pray for him? Himself? Don't look to the left and right of you why they're not doing it. Look to your own heart and ask yourself, why you don't pray for the shaykh in every single prayer? You don't care? If you don't care who will care? Because you're hoping that when you take your last breath he'll be there, why you don't think of him in, in your world? So it means that this is a companionship of ishq and muhabba. When the people begin to show that level of love and respect 
They they mention the shaykh all the time, Ya Rabbi please pray for him, please keep them to be safe, be, keep them to be guarded. It's the prayers of thousands of people that begin to reach to them, dress them, bless them. That's why Allah John asked and Prophet told that if somebody goes to the grave and has a hundred people at their grave, this person is a forgiven person. Why? Because they're interceding. If your character was such that people came to your grave and they weren't despised by, oh finally this zalim died and left us so we can get on with our lives. But if people came and they actually had a love for the person, missed the person, praying for the person, it shows Allah which Allah already knows but wanted the, the companionship and fellowship of people that this person was very loved by people. If, if the prayer of the grave is so important, imagine the prayer in everyday moments that every single prayer we have an ida. That ida should contain the shaykh, your shaykh who's teaching and guiding you and that you pray for his good health and that he stay amongst. For if the tame should come, every time the shaykhs leave the earth the tariqah becomes much more fiercely difficult. So when the shaykhs began to leave this earth everything became upside down and, and uh, all around. So we pray that Allah keep everybody to be healthy, long life and people should show that and, and show that level of respect and commitment. But it's important, tariqah is all about uh, manners and, and belief inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Please forgive my ignorance. Could you please expand upon the teaching of the soil manifesting the understanding of baqa and the annihilation of the soul, not just the physicality? Thank you for everything. Yeah, alhamdulillah, I think we talked last night, <clears throat> the, the analogy of the soul, the analogy of the soil and that is a Muhammadan reality that for people to understand that how to leave this physical and become something new and that Allah is showing us every day that a seed goes into the soil and the soil begin to disintegrate the seed. It becomes fana, annihilated in the soil. If you look, if you look there will be no more seed. And as a result of the power of the soil something new will begin to appear. <clears throat> so our life is about not being a seed, not being a talking seed, not being an active seed but to be what a seed was created to be, right? So it means that, that Allah created no seed that was to remain a seed. <laughs> so just like a worm is supposed to become a caterpillar. A caterpillar is supposed to become a butterfly. Allah had a plan for us that, I'm going to send you to this earth, you're going to plant yourself, you're going to isolate yourself and you're going to bring out your reality, your paradise reality. And you're going to struggle against this regulator shaitan that he put on to each human being to lower their energy. And that was the purpose of our, our life. And that's what Allah meant by, I created you to worship me. So they should have had a life in which to meditate, contemplate, relax, get to know oneself, plant oneself, isolate and block everything out and make a time with their Lord and with their being to understand themselves. And then you can understand the regulator, shaitan said, no way do I want anyone to realize themselves so I keep them busy. Make them run for their rizq, make them to make sin so that they have to even run farther for their rizq. Make them to do this and that and all of these things so that they will never be a tree. So everyone is created not to be a talking seed but to be a tree, to be a, a bush, a, a branch. Allah has a plan for every seed and if it goes into the soil and will become something beautific. And it's the power of the soil that determines what it will be. So if you plant yourself in the desert nothing will happen. So it's the beatific soil that's important. So it means that we must plant ourselves 
in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result of planting ourselves in the most beatific reality then the most beatific new existence will begin to manifest. And that's why another way of looking at it like the black hole that it begins to annihilate all light and as a result will bring it back into baqa. Baqa means to exist in something new. Your light will die in this reality and in Allah's oceans will be resurrected as a new light. Now dressed with the Muhammadan haqqaiq so that they are Muhammadiyoon. So many, many immense realities in manifesting but the understanding of the seed in the tree was important that when we go down into the nothingness that's our reality to seek our reality. But the shaykh is a tree because he did that, he's, he's an existing example that I was once like you a seed and my whole life in trading was to plant myself, hide myself, not to be identified and as a result of that ordered into seclusions, into trainings until that seed was destroyed. As a result a tree started to flourish and to nourish <coughs> and as this tree was being watered with its salawats and the guidance and the nazar of awliyaullah the tree became something large and as a result has fruits. It's those fruits that attract people. For a tree with no fruit well there would be nobody in the audience, nobody be sitting, nobody would be communicating because they say, what benefit are you? We can't take nothing from it, we can't eat it, we, we, what can we do, swing on the branches, nothing. So when Allah want to give in this Divinely way a reality, said, I make you a tree that bears fruit. So imagine then the different types of shaykhs, what type of trees they are. Some shaykhs are like a pomegranate, they have thousands of fruit and in each fruit thousand seeds inside of it. Imagine then the amount of uloom and knowledge is flowing from that reality. Not like apricot that only has one seed, one fruit, five fruits but some shaykhs their reality are like pomegranate trees that every tree hundreds of them and within them maybe 400 or 100 or 300 seeds within each fruit. And as soon as that hits the ground if those are planted then thousands can begin to appear of knowledge and realities and if they plant themselves they can all become trees in that reality and in that ocean. So means it's immense and when we feed from that tree and take from that tree we realize how much it's an importance for our lives, at least we did. We understood it was our lifeline, we understood it was a source of immense and eternal knowledge that every drop of it that we read and understood and meditated it eternally dressed and blossomed the soul and brought us to the proximity of Sayyidina Muhammad Because knowledge is power, the one whom gains Divinely knowledges the soul has an immense amount of angelic lights which equate to power, which equates to luminous beings. The reason they're luminous and their souls are glowing is because of the amount of energy and knowledges that are manifesting within their soul and their reality and that's by the ishq and the muhabbat. So these were, these were very immense understandings and examples for one how to plant oneself and then one how to conduct oneself around a tree. If we benefit from it show it, if, if you love it protect it and guard it for if on your watch that tree gets harmed what will you answer to them? So imagine you have a tree and the, your whole family everyone's eating from that tree in the middle of the night somebody came and choked the tree down, then what do you say, what do you do? Are you the one that has to go back to them and say, well when, when I was watching they came and they destroyed the tree? That means this is in every aspect of our life, whatever responsibilities are given to us, how are we going to go back to Prophet and say, we destroyed it? 
or we lost it, uh, it just, uh, we, we closed it and gave up on it. Uh, I, where do you have a seat at that table for all of eternity? You're not talking about something small, you're talking about something huge. You're gaining a seat in eternity onto a noble, noble association with all of what they have done to gain that access. What are you sitting there for? So you can't lose that responsibility, that's a life, that's a life gift from Allah So as a result of that we held our responsibility and our understanding that this is for our eternal soul, we must complete it, we have to complete it and that's all that uh, I'm in existence for. When other people begin to feel like that their soul is now elevating this, not something small they walk away from, this not a chair that they can just give up say, I don't need to, to be there eternally. This is talking about eternity, eternity that for all of existence and for whatever Allah wants to do with the soul from that time on, what they achieved for all of eternity to dress them, inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi, as you mentioned in the Yasin book, the Ba represents Bahar al Qudra. Can you please explain the reality of the Ba? In the Yasin book? This is from the Qaf Lam Ba. That the Qal, when we talk about the heart, we're talking about not the uh, physical because Allah's eternity oceans is not about the physical realm but He gave us something in our physical to understand slightly what the importance is. Meaning what? You can live without a brain but the Qal is the center of your power, the center of your existence, the house of where your soul resides. So Allah gave to us a qalb for us to understand, you cannot reach me except through qalb. You can't reach through brain, you can't reach through your hand, you can't reach through your feet. So it's a door and it's the most central powerful door of our existence. That's why Prophet described, if you know yourself you'll know your Lord and I'll teach what's in, uh, show you within yourself and upon the horizon. On this one who knows himself will understand that his doorway to the reality is his qalb. So this is his life force, he has to protect it, he has to nourish it, he has to make the zikr of it, he has to guard his heart. He has to watch that his heart is, is governed by muhabbat and, and ishq of Prophet ishq of Allah and Prophet All of this is then the vigilance of the heart. This gives us our understanding, wow if this is for me to reach these realities then when Allah says, God is stressing that's the center most powerful point of existence. So Qaf in Qur'an. Qaf al Qur'an al Majeed. Allah now swears by this Qaf that by the Qur'an, the majestic Qur'an means that every knowledge, every existence, anything coming into existence, going out of existence, every power, every reality is based on that Qaf. That Qaf is coming from where? Where's the direction? Coming? And this is the bullseye of that reality and what we call the Muhammadan heart, Abul Mu'min, Baytullah and not in heaven, not on earth but I'm in the heart of my believer. Means that that qal, that qaf, manzil al-Qur'an is the house of the Qur'an in which this power is flowing. So we say, oh this power, the qalb, Allah is now talking about a power location. That location is in in Muhammadun Rasulullah So this power flows through a lisan, through a lamb and it's called divine speech which is qul. Qul is divine speech. 
to the ba and that's the ocean of power. So this qal is a description of the Muhammadan heart. So then Prophet described and gave clues on how to reach that when he said, oh the heart of Qur'an, everything has a heart, everything has a qalb, everything has a center of power. The qalb of holy Qur'an is Yaseen, Surat al Yaseen because it was all like clues. Oh Prophet Wasallam's name is Sayyidina Yaseen to give us all the signs that this Qur'an and its power is in the heart of Sayyidina Yaseen Wasallam, Habib uh, Habibullah that Allah's love is emanating on that reality, Allah attached Habib Allah. The love of Allah is on Yaseen and as a result that qalb is the ocean of power. So the qul is the inner and what you would see of the outside is just a ba with a dot because the qul can't be seen. Qaf lam is a speech that nothing can contain. Not an angel can hear qul, nothing can hear qul. That's why Allah says, if I, re- if I reveal my Qur'an, if I reveal my qul on a mountain it would be dust. Means that nothing can contain the qul of Allah so it's unseen. What would be seen of an understanding is a ba, so this qul hits the ba. As a result this is an ocean of power that is now moving moving power out. From that point becomes the bab and the door of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. From that point everything now begins to manifest like a huge and immense waterfall like Niagara Fall. Every immensity of realities is flowing from that ba. and these are the awliya of Ulul Bab. They understand from the level of that bab that what flows out from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. This is every knowledge is in that reality and in that uh, dressing, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of time passing faster? <coughs> the reality of time passing faster. Anytime we enter into a timeless state, time is moving faster. Means that the one whom sits and meditates, they become timeless. And as a they come back by minutes and hours. Anytime activities are of a timeless reality and they enter into the energies of timelessness, even the khatam, the zikrs, those who are meditating <coughs> and connecting with it, that time of timelessness because it enters into a realm of no time, the time on the earth has moved faster. Anytime they enter into dunya activity, their time moves very slow because they are now moving with the time. But as soon as we enter into timeless realities and timeless activities, you're outside of the realm of time and the time that is moving is moving very fast. That's why then seventy years of worship when they connect with the real connection If they were to achieve the one hour that Prophet described, there are servants whom their one hour of tafakkur is like seventy years of somebody else's aman. But that's a time movement so that they meditate and contemplate with the level of their soul. So they leave their physical realm, as soon as they meditate with these spiritual souls with the presence of Prophet with awliyaullah 
What happens? Immediately your soul is entering into their presence, there's no time in the world of light. So now you became an entering and moving into a timeless zone. As soon as you move into a timeless zone, the fixed zone of mulk and the world of form is then moving very fast. You entered into timelessness and then the zone of time begins to move fast. So that's why the zikrs, the khatam, the associations, the talks, the meditations, the servant can feel that the movement of time is going very fast. All day long they're doing zikrs, they're all right and they say the week is going fast, the, the month is going fast because uh, this realm of energy is dressing them. As it more and more addresses them, the movement of earth is moving fast for them. Those whom are of a very dunya nature where they have to go day and night and work and only focus on their dunya, only focus on baseball game and football game and time is moving very slow for them because they are, they are bound by time and become servants of time. As a result time will imprison them because the time is trying to grab them and say, you, you be with dunya, you be with me. And as a result when they follow that dunya life and the, their heart is captured by dunya, what happens? The time is moving very slow for them. And as the one whom breaks away from the material world and practices are much more stronger of a timeless reality, their zikr, their chant, their meditation, their breathing, their salah, their fasting, all of this worshipness is timelessness. Anytime they enter into that then the dunya is moving very fast for them, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifum wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.